Welcome to a brand new video on Kubernetes. In the previous video, we managed to create a deployment for a simple Nginx server, and we exposed this deployment with an ingress resource, and we also managed to secure this ingress with a TLS certificate, a self-signed TLS certificate, so we can use HTTPS on it. However, that process was entirely manual, and while that works with a single deployment, this really doesn't scale up if you have more than one deployments. And also certificates expire at some point, so we'd have to manually renew them. And it's very important that you don't forget about it. Otherwise, your users will uh, see warnings that the certificate has expired and you really want to prevent that. So really, the only logical solution is to automate certificate provisioning. And luckily, we can build on what we did in the last video if we integrate it now with Cert Manager by Jetstack. That's a really cool tool. It uses Kubernetes uh, custom resource definitions and um, you can use it for self-signed certificates, which is what we're doing in this video, but you can also use it against real certificate authorities such as uh, Let's Encrypt, which we'll do in a future video. So let's see where we left off in the last video. I have this Nginx deployment here and it's um, reachable on HTTPS example.com because I put example.com to my Minikube cluster here in my host file. And um, in Minikube, we have this Nginx deployment here. We have a service for it. And uh, additionally, there is an ingress and this exposes our service. And also this ingress uh, consumes a secret and that secret uh, should be get secret of course and that secret contains our key pair so if your minikube cluster or your kubernetes cluster is currently not in this state which is what we built in the previous video please check out the previous video on how to expose your uh, service with an ingress and secure it with tls so that you have the same uh, state as i do right now here Okay, so the first thing we want to do is remove that secret because that secret um, was manually created and we want to automate the provisioning of these uh, certificates that are safe in those secrets. So at first we want to get rid of the secret and then at the end of this video, we want to end up back having the secret again, but uh, not having it manually created. So let's, cre uh, let's delete the secret. It's now gone. And if I also just delete the ingress and then reapply the ingress and switch back to the browser this should now no longer work and it's not working that's cool cool so the first thing we have to do is we have to install um, this uh, cert manager here and that uses helm there's a helm chart for it so since this is a brand new cluster that i've never used helm on i will now run helm in it if you don't have helm installed locally just go to um, helm.sh and follow the installation instructions really easy to install but i have it installed already so i can do a helm in it to deploy my uh, tiller in this uh, cluster and then while tiller is getting ready i can go back to the cert manager and look for deploying cert manager and in there is this part here And let me just copy that, paste it here and modify it a bit, remove that. The rest is okay. And also I don't have RBAC enabled. And it says here, if you're not, if you don't have RBAC enabled, you should set RBAC.create false. So it doesn't try creating RBAC resources. So let's do that. RBAC.create equals false. And now if we run that, we should in, uh, install this, um, Cert Manager Helm chart in our cube system namespace. So let's go. And there we go. There it is. Okay, so now we have Cert Manager uh, installed on our cluster, but we don't really know yet what it does and uh, what implication that has. So by installing uh, Cert Manager, we also get a couple of custom resource definitions. So if we look what custom resource definitions are now are. Uh, installed on our uh, cluster. Here's the list. And if you don't know what a custom resource definition is, uh, anything in Kubernetes is a resource. So a pod, for example, is a resource. And a pod is a uh, built-in resource. With the introduction of custom resource definition, as the name implies, uh, anyone can add resources. And they're basically just YAML manifests that um, can be consumed by other uh, pods or, or anything running in the cluster. 
oftentimes these things um, consuming uh, those resources are called uh, controllers and then the the resources are used to configure those controllers best example for a resource and a controller is an ingress you use an ingress to configure your um, your host names for example and then an ingress controller will respond to that um, but anyway with uh, the cert manager here we've gotten three new uh, custom resource definitions so one is uh, certificates cluster issuers and issuers so let's maybe start with uh, an issuer here an issuer is something that you configure that can issue certificates so in our case of a self-signed certificate this will be a simple CA and that CA has its own key pair and can then sign certificates a cluster issuer is so the naming scheme here is similar to how it is used in, in RBAC with roles and cluster roles and role bindings and cluster role bindings so an issuer is scoped to a single namespace where a cluster issuer would be um, used in the entire cluster. And this is really important on multi-tenant clusters because you might have an issuer that you don't want to expose for everyone, it might just be for your team in the cluster, uh, whereas a cluster issuer um, probably makes sense if it's just one team that controls the entire cluster. And then there is a certificate and the certificate is basically our desired state of certificates. So we create a certificate resource later and basically this way tell the issuer, hey, please issue this certificate. And then what the issuer will do is what we did manually in the previous video. It will create uh, that key pair and put it in a secret. And that secret can then be uh, consumed by our ingress that we already have running. So to get started, we now need to create an issuer. And the simplest way here is to create a uh, CA, our own CA that has a key pair that can then be used to sign other certificates. So that means we first need to uh, create a key pair for our uh, CA. But before we do that, I'd like to point out one uh, issue here on GitHub that is issue uh, 279, I believe. If you do this on a Mac and um, you don't specify any specific configuration for your key pair telling it that it's supposed to be a CA, you will run into this error here where it says error getting key pair for a CA issuer. So what we have to do is, um, because macOS, the, the open SSL uh, standard configuration on macOS doesn't include those lines yet, we have to add them to our configuration here. But first up, we need to create a new key and that is straightforward. Let's do OpenSSL gen RSA out CA.key. So that's the key for our CA. And let's make it 2048 long. Cool. So now we have a key. So next up, we need to uh, sign this uh, ourselves. And as said here, we need to make sure that this uh, CA part is contained. So here it says you should add this to your OpenSSL config. But because I don't want to uh, modify my existing OpenSSL config here, I'll just create a copy of it. So I'll copy etc SSL OpenSSL conf, and I'll just copy it to this current folder, and I'll call it OpenSSL with ca.conf and then just modify this file and in the end append these lines cool so now that i have this local config here i can start signing my uh, key and creating my certificate and that is another one of those long open ssl commands so rec for requesting a certificate, 509 for the certificate type, a new one, and no D as so no password protection. The key we already have, it is CA.key, and the SHA-256 algorithm. And for the subject, just so we don't have to enter interactive mode, I will put sample issuer.local. Really doesn't matter here because it's not, not really used anywhere. And let's say this thing is 1024 days valid and the output should be ca.crt and now we come to our custom config so we want extensions v3 underscore ca that's the one we uh, specified in that config file but then of course we also need to point to this config file and that is the openssl with ca.conf so let's run that Cool, so now we have a, have from the previous video, I still have those those TLS ones left over that we manually created, um, but we also have those um, newly created ones here. Okay, so now that we have those root CA keys or the key pair, the key in the certificate, we now need to get that into our cluster somehow. And again, we can use the same uh, command as we did last time. That is the kubectl 
create secret TLS, then we need a name for the certificate, and I'll just call it CA key pair here, and uh, that we have to reference uh, later than when we create the issuer, and then we need minus minus key, and that is CA dot key, and minus minus cert, and that is CA dot CRT. Cool. So now we have this uh, new CA key pair secret that contains both our key and our certificate. That means we can now start creating our issuer, which is which is the first uh, custom resource. And let's just create an issuer.yaml file here. And then in here we need the API version and on a custom resource one that's a custom one and this is called certmanager.cates.io slash v1 alpha one. And the kind of this resource is an issuer. So next up we need the standard metadata. This issuer has a name and we can just call it CA issuer. And it also has a namespace, which is the default one, but that doesn't really matter. We have everything in the default namespace right now anyway. And then under spec, its configuration has CA and that takes a prop called secret name. And now here we need to specify the secret that we just created, which is CA key pair. And just for the linter here, cool. And that's it. So if everything is configured correctly, we can now apply this and it will accept this. Looks good. So if we now do a kubectl get issuer, we now see we have this one CA issuer. So as I said before, we would create this CA issuer once and then for every app that we want to get a certificate for, we would create one certificate resource. So that's up next. Again here we have API version cert manager dot v1 alpha one and the kind is this time a certificate. Again metadata and now for the name uh, we should call it after our uh, after the uh, fully qualified domain name for this. So it's example.com. And remember last time the secret we called example.com hyphen TLS. And this is also the same uh, naming pattern that is used here. And then again in the namespace default, but doesn't really matter. You can also um, specify that when uh, applying it with kubectl. And then for the spec, we need to reference the secret name that we want our secret to end up in. So this is not referencing a secret that already exists. This is referencing the secret that we want created. And that is here example com TLS. And then we also need to put a reference to the issuer. And that has a name which is CI issuer and it has a kind and that was an issuer. Then we need the common name in our certificate. That should be example.com. And now we can also have alternate DNS names such as www.example.com. And the linter is complaining here about trailing spaces. Okay, fair enough. So let's try applying this newly created certificate. It was applied now. So this means that if we check now, get certificate, there's one example com, okay. And now instead of a get here, let's do a describe certificate, this one here. And now we see, okay, at first we have an error checking certificate. The secret is not found. Then we have preparing certificate with issuer. Then we have issuing certificate, that's good. And then we have certificate issued successfully and at last scheduled for renewal in 8,039 hours. So cert manager will also automatically renew this for us. So this means since we specified a secret here, there should now be a secret, get secret, there it is. And it's 57 seconds old. So let's take a look at that. Maybe minus O YAML. Then we see we have a base64 encoded certificate and a key, and that was automatically issued. And because it has the same naming conventions as before, if we take a look at the ingresses that we have running, it 
it is still referenced here tls host secret example com tls so let's go to our browser and see what happens if we try to access HTTPS example.com. It's a new certificate, a new self-signed one that I haven't trusted yet, so I need to trust it, but it is working. So we now have an automatically provisioned certificate by a cert manager that will be renewed when it expires and we don't have to do anything and adding a second app is as easy as creating a new certificate resource. So I know what you're going to say now, this is just a self-signed certificate, how does that help me? But the cool thing about uh, Cert Manager is that uh, this CA issuer that we had here, this was just a very simple example, but you can also use Let's Encrypt and we'll do that in a future video. And uh, then we can use Let's Encrypt staging without any sort of rate limits for experimenting um, around. And also Let's Encrypt prod to actually issue a real browser trusted um, certificate signed by a known authority. So if you like this video, or also if you didn't like it, I'm happy to um, receive your feedback in a comment and also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss when we issue real certificates against the Let's Encrypt API. Until then, thanks for watching and see you.